Hi, this is Long. Welcome to our video series on search patterns for the most common studies in radiology. Please note that this is an introduction to study interpretation. An enormous amount of detail is omitted for brevity. Continue dedicated reading, seeing as many cases as possible, and keep getting feedback from subspecialists during the course of your training. All right, so today we're going to talk about the basic approach to a non-contrast CT had. As usual, uh, we're going to start off understanding what the patient situation is like, the history, the indication. We'll look at prior studies, CT and MRI, including the had. And then um, for due diligence, you'll take a look at the localizers, any areas that are not imaged within the cross-sectional images of the CT had. And then what I basically like to do is, big picture, use an outside-in approach. Look at the scalp extracranial soft tissues, and then eventually look at the calvarium, skull base, osteostructures, basically. Then the CFS spaces, including the convexities, the ventricles, the basal cisterns, and then uh, any sort of vessels that we can kind of see uh, within the limitations of non-contrast technique, and then ultimately the brain parenchyma. Okay, let's get started. Um, it's going to be good first to take a look at the localizer images, and particularly if on the localizer images we're seeing portions of the upper chest. Um, look at the osteostructures, look at the lungs, make sure there's no mass lesions, no fractures, no obvious gross abnormality there. And um, then sometimes we'll also see the cervical spine, if um, depending on the localizer image. Okay, and then. Um, once you have a sense of what's going on with the patient, what I like to do is start peripherally, okay? And I'm looking, I separate out the extracranial soft tissues, especially the scalp, into kind of quadrants. I'm going up and down and just looking for mass lesions, uh, uh, collections, soft tissue irregularity, okay? Up and down in each area. And then we're just going to look, you know, more so at the inferior aspect of the study. In some patients, you're going to see a fair amount of the deep spaces of the of the neck here. You're going to see the upper aspect of the pharynx. You're going to see the nasopharynx. You want to make sure you know that there's no no obvious mass lesions in that area. Okay, um, and then we want to take a quick first pass of the orbits to look for collections, mass lesions, any abnormality intracoronally, extracoronally, and also of the globe. And then a first pass look at the paranasal sinuses and the mastoid outer cells, which we'll come back to. Okay. Um, and then ultimately, uh, on the axials, we'll then move into the osteostructures. And then similarly, and I'm going to make these a little thicker images, I like to take a look at the calvarium, again, in quadrants for any sort of um, focal lesions, any fractures, all right, going up and down in the calvarium into different quadrants, and then, then in the skull base, all right? And then we're going to look the, at the walls of the orbit at the paranasal sinuses, the osseous aspects of them, okay? We're gonna look at the TMJs. You're gonna look at these various skull-based foramina, and I won't go through all of them, but a couple, you know, you'll see the uh, foramen ovale, spinosum, you're gonna see the um, uh, carotid canals, jugular bulb, um, and you're gonna look all around the skull base for subtle abnormality, for widening of the skull base foramina, for fractures, um, and then the history, the patient presentation, any mechanism of injury is gonna key you into that, all right? Um, and then kind of having taken a look at that, you'll go through, and again, we're just talking about the axials right now. Um, we're gonna move down into the CSS spaces. And again, in three categories, um, convexities and sulci, the ventricles, and then the, uh, basal cisterns, I like to start and look for very subtle blood or extra acid collections at the frontal convexities, up and down slowly on thin images. I'm kind of moving faster now for the sake of brevity. And then we're going to look all around the brain in the frontal convexities, temporal, parietal, um, occipital, and then the posterior fossa, okay? And you can window tightly to see and look very carefully for abnormality in that area, for mass effect in the underlying brain parenchyma, for collections, for any sort of abnormal density, okay? Uh, and so that covers the convexities. And we can also look uh, at the ventricular system, okay? We're gonna look for basically symmetric ventricles for abnormal increase in size compared to prior. We're gonna look for internal abnormal densities at the lateral ventricles, at the area of the foramen of Monroe. We're gonna look in the third ventricle, into the aqueduct, into the fourth ventricle, down all the way to the foramen magnum, okay? And then, uh, similarly, we're going to go through, and I won't name them all, but the basal sister and supracellular area, inter and then, you know, looking at these little crevices, the interhemispheric fissure, the sylvian fissures, we're going to follow that down uh, around the 
midbrain, let's see, the midbrain, and the intrapeduncular, ambient, quadrigeminal, and they're going to fall into the CPA, prepontine, all the way down into the areas around the medulla, including the cisterna magna. And basically, we're looking at all of these areas. You see CSF. They're not a face. There's not any sort of abnormal mass lesion. There's not any sort of abnormal uh, kind of blood or other um, abnormal density, okay? And that's just on the axials, all right? And then knowing that within the CFS spaces, we're also going to have vasculature. And frequently, you're not going to see the vasculature well in a non-conscious exam, but please do note that we are going to see in some part of the circle of Willis. You're going to see, you know, the, the ACAs in part kind of coming up and the MCAs and kind of your commonly, you can kind of see hyperdensity in the areas where there's clot or thrombus in the appropriate setting, you know? And you can even see that all out to the sylvian fissures in the vertebral basilar system. Okay, just remember that you do see those and that in the appropriate setting, you're gonna to wanna to look for focal density there, okay? Um, and then don't forget that there's venous vasculature, right? The superior sagittal sinus all the way down to the confluence, the transverse sinus, the sigmoid, out into the jugular bulb is exiting the skull and more inferiorly, all right? We're not gonna see those perfectly, but please note that you can see thrombus as hyperdensity there, all right? And then ultimately taking a look at the brain parenchyma, we're on thins right now, but um, we're gonna make these a little thicker. I like to go up to about five millimeters and window these tight and look to, and, and try and separate that gray white differentiation and see that that's preserved, okay? In every single lobe. And I like to, you know, um, kind of section off the brain into different areas and look up and down into the frontal, temporal, uh, temporal and parietal and occipital. And we look at the preservation of the basal ganglia, okay? Um, and the uh, insular ribbon. And we're gonna you know, make sure that that is symmetric and preserved bilaterally. We're gonna look down at the posterior fossa that is something, you know, we're seeing similar gray white uh, differentiation at the cerebellar hemispheres bilaterally, okay? And we're, at the same time that we're checking for that, we're looking for abnormal densities. We're looking for lucent, you know, abnormal lucencies or hyperdensities. We're looking for mass effect on the normal architecture of the brain. Midline shift, um, kind of any sort of effacement of the sulci of the um, normal, um, you know, fissures, okay, of the brain parenchyma. And again, this is just on the axials. And then we can use the coronal and sagittal reconstructions for different things. And now, you know, we're going just very briefly that if you wanted then, you know, in the, if you found anything on the axles as you were searching through, you can use the different projections to problem solve. And so frequently, I actually like to do the different compartments together on the different projections, or I can do them, you know, or you can do them separately. But if you're, again, you're just looking at the extracranial soft tissues, and then, you know, in the bones, different areas are going to be better demonstrated on the um, coronal or sagittal uh, reconstructions. I particularly like the coronal reconstructions for the skull base for the um, TMJs, for the walls of the orbit um, in certain areas of the anterior cranial fossa uh, and the um, ethmoid aerosols, okay? Lamina papyracea more anteriorly, okay? Um, and then the within the intracranial compartment, um, the coronal is going to be particularly good for abnormalities for at the vertex, along the falcs, along the tentorial leaflets, um, and along the skull base where shriek artifact can kind of make it very difficult to see things. Um, we're going to take a look at uh, the, um, you can also take, a, you know, sometimes a better look at the, you know, the intraorbital components uh, or anatomy here on the, on the uh, coronal images. On the, on the sagittal images, frequently these can be used as problem solving for the more extracranial uh, anatomy, but particularly in the intracranial compartment, you're going to look very carefully at three particular areas, the cellar and supercellar anatomy to see if there's a mass, any sort of mass lesions, any expansion of the cella, an empty cella, any mass effect in the supercellar um, anatomy. You're going to look in the pineal region for cystic lesions, for mass lesions, uh, displacement of the normal structures there. Okay, you're gonna look down at the foramen magnum for any cerebellar tonsillar topia, for any herniation, for any mass lesions there. Okay, and this can, this kind of midline sagittal can give you an overall good anat you know sense of other structures here, um, like the corpus callosum, the cingulate gyrus, right? But um, this uh, this kind of this three areas here are gonna be the you know the most important things to look on at uh, the sagittal images, and then you can basically troubleshoot um, other things, the other anatomy on 
and the sagittals as needed, inclusive of, you know, the CSF structures, the brain parenchyma, the vascular structures, in particular the venous sinuses, are sometimes parts of that anatomy are better demonstrated in the sagittal images. Okay, so that covers basically all the anatomy on the three uh, kind of main uh, reconstructions that we use. And just to give you a quick recap of what we're looking at on the CT CAD. Big picture, you want to get a sense of what the patient, what's happening to the patient, why the study is ordered, you know, correlating across multiple priors and getting a sense to where ana you know, any abnormality might be found. We're going to use an outside-in approach to be very systematic about the anatomy, looking at the intracranial soft tissues, including the, calva you know, the scalp, other sorts of things, of ultimately looking then at the bones, calvarium, skull base, orbital walls, anything that's incidentally imaged. You know, I hadn't mentioned the upper cervical spine, sometimes we're going to see some of that. CSF spaces in the different compartments of the convexities, the sulci, and then ultimately the ventricular system, the basal cisterns, okay? You're going to take, remember that you do see the arterial anatomy, you do see the venous anatomy, and just making sure that in the appropriate setting that we're looking very carefully at those for focal density or other sort of abnormalities. Rarely you will even see large aneurysms, okay? And then finally at the brain, looking at the gray-white differentiation, super tentorially, uh, at the at the cortex as well as the deep gray and then infratentorally okay and then using the different projections as needed for various errors that are demonstrated to advantage on the different axial coronal and sagittal images.